All right, so the next part of our hypothesis testing is called one and two tailed tests. So it's related to our what we've just done, the, the p-value um, before. So again, it's um, another way of kind of testing and seeing is there statistical significance in our hypothesis. Um, and so as the text here says that alternative ways of calculating significance um, we use the term tail because the ends of the distribution are used. So here's, so this is what the distribution would be like. And so we've got two tails either end. Um, and so that's when we say that our alternative hypothesis is that uh, the mean's not equal to the population mean. And then you'd use one tail if you were sure. So this lower tail here, you would use if you were sure that your mean of your sample was significantly different to what the population was. But not only that, but lower. So over here, you're just saying that it's not the same. Whereas here, you're saying... Well, it's not the same, but it's lower as well. And then you could go the other tail up the other end, where if you were saying that you knew that it was bigger. <clears throat> All right, so by considering one or two tails, you can calculate the p-value by either you can consider both those tails or just one of them. All right, so often we would just choose two tails rather than one tail because um, for one tail you need to actually be sure that it's going to be less or it's going to be greater than. Um, so here's what, so when the alternative hypothesis is directional, so in the previous example, uh, previous example, previous lesson when we're looking at those um, uh, cars and their fuel consumption, we had a directional one there because we were saying in our alternative hypothesis that the new model's fuel consumption was less. Um, so that's when we'd use one tail. And if it's non-directional, we carry out the two tails. So in other words, you know, we're pretty sure it's different, but we don't know whether it's more or it's less. All right. <clears throat> so the p-value of a two-tailed test is just twice the p-value of a one-tail test. So when you look at this two-tail test, see we've got these two areas here. And of course, remember our normal distribution is symmetrical. So that area and that area are the same. So you've got two of them, whereas with your one-tail, you've only got one of them there or one of them there. So obviously this area there is twice what that one is. So that's up about. All right, so here we are. We've got a coffee machine. And we know that it's mean coffee dispensed is 200 mils and its standard deviation is 5 mil. All right, and it gets serviced. And then we test to see whether it's still functioning properly after the service. And so a random sample of 15 cups and then those 15 cups, this was the mean volume from each of those. Um, 15 cups. All right. So write down the null and a hypoth and an alternative hypothesis. All right. So for example, oops, there we are. A eh? for our null hypothesis. We need to think about what's going on here. So our null hypothesis would say, okay, well. The mean that we've just fit of our <clears throat> 15 cups, yeah, even though that it's a mean volume of that, what we're going to say is that, in effect, when we've taken more and more and more cups of coffee, in effect, really, 
the mean we're going to get is the same as what the the known mean for the um, coffee machine is. All right, so that's our null hypothesis. Now, in this second one, our alternative hypothesis, now we've got a mean volume that was less, but when you look at it, 200 mil, it's only like 2.3 mil less. So it's really not a lot less given that the standard deviation up here is five. So it's, it's not a lot less than what, you know, the machine, the population, the machine's known uh, mean um, volume, dispensing volume is. So rather than a, a saying, well, because that's less, it's going to be less, our alternative hypothesis, we, we go a bit broader than that. We say, OK, well, our alternative hypothesis is that the mean volume now after the service of the machine is not going to equal 200. All right, so our null hypothesis says that the mean volume dispensed now after the surface is exactly the same as what it was before. And our alternative is that it's going to be different than what it was before. Right. So for part B, it says use the given data to test whether the mean volume is still that. And we want a 5% level of significance. All right. So let's have some information, some stuff. What do we know? Let me write down some things, some of the things that we know. We know that the mean of the machine is 200. We know the standard deviation of the machine is 5. All right, that's these two. And then what do we know? We know we took a sample and the mean of that sample was 197.7. And we knew we did 15 cups in our sample. So what else do we need? We need the expectation value of our sample. And we're going to say that that is the same as the um, known value for the coffee machine, so the population. Um, then what else do we need to know? We need to know the standard deviation of our sample. And so standard deviation is out of a root n. So it's 15. No, it's not. It's 5. 5 over root 15. Uh, which, if I look at this, is 1.291. So what are we looking at then? What we're looking at then is a p-value, and we're using the two-tail one, right? So that's so the two-tail, so p-value of two-tail equals two lots at the p-value of the one tail. All right, so two lots of the probability that z, and we're going less than or equal to our sample mean minus our population mean over our sample standard deviation. All right. And so then that's two times the probability that Z is less than or equal to uh, 197.7 minus 200 over 1.291 and that's two lots of the probability 
that said is less than if we work that or equal to work that in out in your calculator it's negative 1.782 and then if you go to the calculator and work find with the normal distribution standard normal what a pro that probability is you find that it's 0 0.0 374, which gives us 0 0.0748. <clears throat> All right, now before I get to what that means, let's have also a look at how we might do that in the calculator. So here's our calculator. So here's the stuff. Let's go back. So oh, let's just I'll just run through the whole lot. Statistics. We're calculating something. We're doing a test. Um, <clears throat> we're doing yeah, Z test, that's all right. Condition, so this time the condition we said that it wasn't equal. All right, so we go to help and condition. Yep, two tail test, all right, see, so it's got down there, two tail test. So it's not significant. Um, <clears throat> then the um, mean of our population that's the known um, things oh, I forgot to see so it's got list there I forgot to go to variable so here we go that's better um, mean 200 uh, our standard deviation was uh, 5 wasn't it 5 mil um, we measured our sample to have an average of 197.7 and we did 15 cups of coffee. And so here we are. Our Z value is negative 1.7812. Yeah, 15. Yep, 7.82. And its probability is 0 0.748. 0 0.748. Eight. So there it is here. All right. So there's there it is on the calculator. The calculator's figured that out. All right. So the question is, what does that mean? Now up here we said we said test the five percent level of significance. So we've got 0.748 here. Now 0.748. What is that? That's seven point five percent. So Oh, there's the calculator two as well. <clears throat> All right, so what does this miss mean? For a p-value of greater than 0.05, so that's 5%, there is insufficient evidence against. All right, so that's where this 5% comes here. So... Because we've got a number that's bigger than that, 7.5%. Um, what that actually means is that it's not low enough for us to say that, well, now our machine operates differently than what it did before. All right, because that's the 5% level and we've got a bigger percentage than that. So... Um, what we say is that, yeah, there's not a significant difference. So what does this mean? For a p-value greater than 0.05, there's insufficient evidence against H0, and the p-value in this case is 0.748, which is greater than this. So there's insufficient evidence to conclude that the mean volume has changed. All right. So here's the thing, just as a rule of thumb, I guess, is that generally a two-tailed test is used. So as I've said there, and I kind of touched on this when I went into this, this example, um, even though that particular um, sample that we did got a, a lower mean volume, 
wasn't that much lower for us to say, well, it's that's what it's going to be. It's going to be giving us a low above volume now. Oh. But it was different to what the, the population one is. And so that's what we used as our alternative. We said, OK, well, it, now that we've cleaned it, it's now different to what it should be rather than the same. So you would really need strong evidence to, to just go for one one tail. All right, so if the volume was a lot less than that, <clears throat> then we might do, we might say that, but that, that wasn't the case. So two tail tests and a confidence interval. So we did about confidence intervals before. So in effect, this, what we're doing in the hypothesis test at 5% significance is relating to 95% confidence level. And I, so like when you go for our, there it is, it's beautiful, isn't it? Nice thing here. So if there we go and we had those confidence intervals and so 95% of it was, was in here, but now what we're doing is we're doing these five and we're looking at these tails, which each end, of course, is 2.5%. So there's our 5%. So effectively, there's a there's a, a close link between that 5% significance and the 95% confidence interval. All right, and so here's our 95% confidence interval. And so... If we, um, <clears throat> we're using that rather than the 5% the significance level, so rather than the tail tests, um, we're going to reject the null hypothesis if the mean is outside this interval. All right, so if we had four this particular example here worked out this mean and worked out the confidence, 95% confidence, then we would find that the actual mean of uh, the known mean of the coffee would fit in that 95% confidence interval. So it's therefore we're not going to um, reject because it would be inside. So we only reject for confidence intervals. We reject if it's outside. And for the p-value, we reject if it's inside, which seems a bit weird, doesn't it? But really, if here's our, here's our things, so if our Uh, sample stuff fits in any of this. Then that's good. But if it's outside that confidence limit, um, then we, um, as it says there, we reject. And of course, the p-value is these ends here. All right. So, for example, five, oh, no, I talked about that. Example five up there, that's that one up there. For the confidence there it is, that's worked out. So it's between 195.7 and 200.23. So our population mean, according to that sample that we did, would fit somewhere in between this. And as we know, that is correct. It is somewhere in between this because it's 200. The known value, it's just inside, but it is inside. And so this is our null hypothesis that it was inside. And so seeing as it is inside, um, we, we accept the null hypothesis. Or if you want to read it a different way, we don't reject it. All right. So the two things, the confidence um, intervals and the, uh, the p-values, they're not 
mutually exclusive. They're, they're in effect doing the same um, same thing, just looking at it from different angles. All right, so there's a bit more to go on this one today. And so some two-tailed tests, another way of looking at two-tailed tests. So for example, suppose that Z is a standard, normal, random variable, find the probability that the magnitude of Z is greater than two. So here, see, the magnitude. So it's saying the magnitude. So here, if we want to say that, the magnitude of, so first of all here, this first bit, if Z is less than negative two, so we're looking at magnitude. So remember, magnitude gets rid of the negative. Um, and here <clears throat> that Z is greater than 2, that one makes sense. And so negative 2 down here, 2 up here. And remember, this is the standard normal, and that's symmetrical. So this area here and this area here is the same. So the area that we're looking at, which is the probability that the magnitude of z is greater or equal to 2 is twice the probability that it's less than negative 2. And if you go on your calculator and you figure out what that is, the probability that z is less than negative 2. And remember, z, just a reminder, z is the standard normal. And so um, when you go to that, you get 0.2275. And so double that, 0.045 is the area of those two ends. <clears throat> so what have we found? Well, we found that Z is at least two units from the mean. It's essentially, that's what, what we're after. So the probability that Z is at least two units from the mean is, uh, is that. All right. <clears throat> So here's an example. Let's grab a drink. Suppose that X is a normally distributed random variable with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 5. Find the probability that X is at least 3 units from the mean. All right, so what do we want? If we look at what this was talking about up here, this one here, but this time not three, two, but three. So we're wanting that the probability that X minus the mean is greater than or equal to three. All right. Now, remember that Z is equal to X minus the population mean over the population standard deviation. <clears throat> then what that means is that the probability, the magnitude of X minus the mean, greater or equal to three, we want to change that to Z, then what we need to do is we need to we already got x minus the mean here and we want to change this to z because then we use our standard normal to help us we just need to divide this by the standard deviation now if we're going to divide this side of our um, inequality sign by the standard deviation. Then, as we know, what we do to one side, we've got to do the other. So we're going to divide that by the standard deviation as well. <clears throat> so now, what do we want? We want the probability that the magnitude of Z is greater than or equal to 3 over our standard deviation is 5. 
is 3 over 5. All right, now, that magnitude bit, remember, we can go, okay, because remember, there's this area, these tails down here, this one here and this one here, and the cutoff is negative 3 fifths and 3 fifths, and then the, the area that we're looking at is both of those, so it's twice this one. So twice the probability that Z is less than or equal to negative three fifths. And then we go and we get our calculator out and we look up what the probability of Z is being less than negative three fifths. And let's see if I can. No, we don't want tests. We want to calculate. The distribution, the normal CDF, what are we after? Our lower limit is negative some big number. Our upper limit is negative 3 divided by 5. And there it is, 0.2743. Four two seven four three, and uh, 0.2743 and then we double that and we get 0 0.5486 all right So what does that mean? In terms of testing a hypothesis, we would reject the hypothesis if the distance between the sample mean and the hypothesis mean is more than would be explained by normal variation. And this is written as of that. All right. If the distance between the sample and the actual that's the difference between that. The distance, so we don't know, it doesn't matter whether it's a positive or a negative value, the distance. So we can say the two tail test. Here's our p value. Remember, this is our null factor. There's our z in terms of our sample. And so here we get this there, so we can modify our p-value, so it's the probability of this. All right, so mu is our population mean, x bar is our sample mean, sigma is our population uh, standard deviation, and n is our sample size. All right. <clears throat> All right, so that's just another way. This here is just another way of looking at what we did previously. So let's have a look at this example. And this is the last one. So suppose the weight in kilo, mass it should be, but anyway, the mass x kilo sandbags normally distributed with a random variable, the mean of 50 and a standard deviation is 1.5. Random sample of 10 bags is taken. All right, so what do we got? <clears throat> what we've got is that our mean is 50. Our standard deviation is 1.5, and we're taking a sample of 10 bags. <clears throat> what do we want? We want to know the probability that the mean mass of 10 bags in the sample differs by one kilo or more from the population mean. All right, so the probability that between the, the mean weight of the 10 bags, which is our sample, and the population, so the difference between those 
is greater than or equal to one. All right, that's what we're after. So the difference in the sample and the population means differs by one kilo or more. So that difference is greater than or equal to one. All right, so based on this here, there we are, that's what we're looking at. What we end up with is that the probability, changing it to Z, the probability, the magnitude of Z is greater than or equal to the magnitude of this stuff here. And so we're wanting our mean, our sample mean and the other mean a different of, of one. All right, so then we've got one. So that's one times the square root of n, which was 10, over the standard deviation of our population is 1.5. So that's what we're after. So it's the probability that the magnitude of z is greater than or equal to, when you work all of that on your calculator, it's 2.108. All right, so again, when we go from that, we go to our, remembering again, we've got our two tails, <clears throat> which is then just twice the probability that Z is less than the negative of this number. So that bottom end tail. All right, and then we grab our calculator out and do what we did before with it. Here it is. Let's go back a bit, eh? So our upper limit on this time, our upper is negative 2.108. So we'll go next. And there we are. So our probability, 0 0.0175. All right, so two lots of point. 0, 0.0175 and then you times that by 2 in your calculator and you get 0 0.035. So the probability that the mean weight is going to be different to 50 by 1 or more kilos, the probability of that happening is 0 0.035. So 3.5% of cases. All right, so suppose however, that the mean weight of 10 bags, the 10 bags is 49.1. Right, because we weren't told what it was here. All right. Suppose that but now we have, we've got this mean. And so what are we wanting to do? We've got two tests. We can say that the null is that, no, that, it's really, it's not going to be significant. It's not going to be different enough to say that you know, the mean's different. Or statistically, that, you know, the bags aren't being filled up enough. When we've taken this sample, that's going to represent the whole population. And here, this one, it says no. All right, so we want to know what a p-value is. And so... Because we've got just not equals to, that's where we want to use our two tail. And so that's what we're using is, is this stuff here. All right. So it's just, this is what we're using. So what we've got for part B is because the population, uh, the sample mean is 49.1. So for our P value, What we're doing is we're looking at the probability, the magnitude of Z is greater than or equal to the sample mean minus the population mean times by, again, the root 10 on 1.5. All right. So it's very similar 
to what we've got up here. But instead of up here in part one, we were asked part A, we we're asked about a variation or a difference of one. Well, in this case, we've got a difference, and it's not one. It's four, and it's forty nine. So we've got to find out what that what that actual difference is, <clears throat> and so. When we do that calculation, probability that the magnitude of Z greater than or equal. So when we work that out, we actually get a negative number. But remember, see, this is in absolute value signs. That's why it's in absolute value signs, because we get negative 1.8974 here when we work that out, which, of course, is not what we're after. And so that's the probability that the magnitude of Z is greater than or equal to 1.8974. And so, of course, with the two-tail thing that we do, it's two lots of the probability when Z is less than 1.8974. Two times. Let's have a look. Let's figure that out, shall we? Let's go back to our calculator. And <clears throat> what do we got? 1.8974. So we're going to let's go back. So this one here is 1.8974. Next, there it is. There's our probability. Uh, oh, actually, sorry, I forgot to put I forgot to put negative in there, didn't I? Whoops, I forgot that negative here. Ooh. Uh -huh. Yes, less than the negative. I thought that number looked a bit funny there, didn't I? So I need a negative in front of this. Put a negative there. There we are. That's better. That's better. So 0 0.20289. All right. So that's oops, 0 0.0289. And then you times that by 2. And you get 0 0.0578. All right. Let's shoot back to the question and see what the question says. Determine the p-value appropriate. So here we go. This is our p-value that we're going to use to test our hypothesis. <clears throat> and then in part two, it says, based on this p-value, what is your conclusion? And so we're going to use a significance of 0.5. Um, and so our p-value that we've got is bigger than that. Just a little bit, but it's bigger than that. And so remember when our p-value is bigger, so p-value is part two. P-value is bigger. than 0.05. And so remember when our p-value is bigger than this. Um, so what we say is that there's insufficient evidence CE to reject um, the mean mass is not 50 kilos all right, so if they're doing some quality control there to say, you know, our machine's supposed to fill it up to 50 kilos um, with a standard deviation of, we've taken a sample, doing some quality control, having a look, done this p-value, and we go, okay, well, this sample's not significantly different to what um, we might expect. So, therefore, um, 
we have no reason to think that our machine's no longer uh, filling it up to, you know, a mean of 50 kilos. All right, so there's our one and two tail testing. Again, remember it's related to um, the normal distribution and the things that we've been talking about. It's, it's they're connected, but as I mentioned in there with the confidence intervals, it's that we're looking at things from a different um, direction in there. Uh, let's see, did I put anything on that page? No, I didn't put anything on that page. All right, so that's it for one and two tail tests. Um, we use a calculator a lot to help us with these things. If there's things in there you're not sure of, make sure you get some help. And as always, have fun.